Hi, everyone. I am a data scientist at Carbon Plan and one of the developers of the generic mapping tools and its Python wrapper, PyGMT. So Weiji, Leo, and I wrote this uh, presentation proposal, but really PyGMT reflects a group effort by many more people. So I'd like to start by thanking all of our maintainers, contributors, as well as our funding sources, sources and the organizers and reviewers for SciPy. The two main points I hope you take away from this presentation are first, I hope you find that PyGMT is a useful tool for working with geospatial data. And second, I want you to know that you could get involved with our community if you want uh, to get help with the software, uh, to share your own research, or to contribute to development. So I'll start with a brief overview of the library. Then we'll work through a live demonstration of some of PyGMT's capabilities and conclude with an overview of our community structure, some of our future plans, and a solicitation for feedback on those plans. The primary purpose of PyGMT is to provide a Pythonic interface to the generic mapping tools, or GMT. GMT is a command line program with over 34 years of continuous development. While GMT has a really remarkable funding and development history, it also has a very active present-day user base. As one example, the 2019 paper published in G-Cubed on GMT6 was one of their most uh, downloaded for that year and is already one of their most cited papers of all time. So, uh, in my opinion, one of the main reasons for GMT's longstanding success is its utility for processing geospatial data and for making really high quality maps. So, one of the main reasons why you might want to use PyGMT is to access that functionality from Python while also leveraging all of the excellent tools that are part of the scientific Python ecosystem. So we'll go through some of that functionality in a live demonstration, but I would also encourage you to take a look at pygmt.org, where you can review our reference documentation, find uh, gallery examples, tutorials, and in particular, I'd point you towards our external resources guide, where you can find a 90-minute short course that we recently put together for the EGU General Assembly and published on YouTube. So uh, let's get started with a demonstration of some of PyGMT's functionality. Uh, if you're interested, you can find the Jupyter Notebook that we'll be working through uh, in the SciPy 2022 repository on GitHub. And uh, you can also try it out yourself using the launch binder link. Before I start, can, uh, if anyone needs a larger font size, please raise your hand. Better? Okay, so in this demonstration, we'll cover two examples of data visualization with PyGMT and two examples of some of the data processing functionality. For our data visualization examples, we'll use PyGMT and we'll also use GeoPandas for reading and manipulating vector data. PyGMT has functionality that could benefit researchers in many different disciplines. That said, GMT has a really strong history in supporting geophysics research, so it felt appropriate to start our first visualiza visualization example with plotting earthquake focal mechanisms. This is taken um, or adapted from an example put together by Dong Dong for the GMT for Geodesy UNAVCO short course, and we'll be using data from the Global CMT project. The primary focus is plotting these focal mechanisms, but we'll want to provide some context for our map, and we can do that using one of the data sets that GMT serves. And these are mirrored um, throughout the world, so you can easily download them no matter where you are. We'll be using the SRTM 15 plus uh, Earth Relief data set, and we can load this using the load Earth Relief function in the data sets module. We provide these data sets at various resolutions. Here we'll use a resolution of two arc minutes. We'll specify the region of interest using the region parameter, and we'll use grid line registration. By uh, default, the output for all raster data in PyGMT is X-ray data arrays, so that's what we see here. We have those data stored as a data array 
for Earth relief data. All of the plotting in PyGMT is handled through the figure class. So to start plotting, you will always create an instance of the figure class. And then you can create your maps by calling its method to lay down different map elements in a specific order. So the first map element that we want to add is our Earth relief data. And we can plot that using the GRD image method by passing our data array to the grid parameter, adding some automatic hill shading, adding a projection. So here we'll use a Mercator projection with a 15 centimeter wide map. There are many different projections uh, supported by GMT and PyGMT that you can find in our gallery. We'll also um, specify how we want the map frame plotted by annotating the west and south borders and having automatic annotation intervals. And GMT provides access to many different color maps, including the scientific color maps and the CM ocean color maps. Here, we'll use the Oleron CM ocean color map. So now we have laid down the first element of our map, and we can add a color bar using the color bar method. We'll specify the position should be the top, uh, the top half of the right-hand side of the map. Some, uh, some annotations every 2,000 meters, a label, and use the same shading. We can embed a preview of our PyGMT figure using the show method. So now we have our first map used by, uh, created by PyGMT, and uh, we can start working on adding the focal mechanisms. We'll first want to adjust the color map to be more appropriate for these data. So we can use matplotlib's plasma color map, specify the, the range for that color map to be from 0 to 700 kilometers, and reverse the direction. The method for plotting focal mechanisms is called MECA. So here I've added some static data to this repository. This is from the global CMT catalog. We'll want to specify the format of the um, focal mechanism designation, as well as its size, and map our data to that color map that we recently created. And then add another color bar and display the result. In addition to uh, embedding the previews in your Jupyter notebooks, you can also save as a regular file on disk using the save fig method. This supports JPEGs, PNGs, etc. So uh, now we see that we have earthquakes.png for this figure. So in this example, uh, we've seen that PyGMT provides access to the core functionality of GMT from an uh, interactive Python development environment. But as I mentioned before, one of the main reasons why you might want to use PyGMT is due to the integration with other packages in the scientific Python ecosystem. So in this second example, we'll show how PyGMT can be used to uh, project and plot vector data that can be read and manipulated using GeoPandas. So first, we want to download and, and read, some, or read some data. And so we'll use GeoPandas to do that. Uh, and we'll index our GeoData frame to select a few different road types that we want to visualize and define a region of interest for our plot and also uh, specify what the map title should be. So uh, as before, every time you're plotting with PyGMT, you'll first want to create an instance of the figure class and then call its methods to add map elements. Here, we'll start by customizing the map appearance by using base map to lay down the map uh, axes, specifying our region, again, our projection and our frame specifications. We have our roads stored as a GeoPandas GeoData frame, but we'll also want to add some context, and we can use the coast method to do that. So GMT serves the GSHHG uh, data set for coastlines, and so we can access that using the coast method, coloring land gray, water blue, and sh uh, painting shorelines with a one-point thick black pen. Now to the fun part, we can pretty easily plot the data, the line geometry in our geodata frames by passing those data objects to the data parameter of the plot method. For each, we'll also specify the pen that we'll use to plot those roads, as well as, a, as the label that should be entered into the, as the legend item. 
So now we'll finally lay down the legend associated with each of those objects and display our result. So in this example, you've seen that um, you can use PyGMT to project and plot data objects from GeoPandas. In general, for tabular or uh, for tabular data, PyGMT supports NDRAs, pandas data frames, GeoPandas geodata frames, and X-ray data sets that store 1D data arrays. And for raster data, uh, PyGMT supports X-ray data arrays. In, and this is in addition to your fi uh, standard on disk file formats like NetCDF, GeoTIFFs, and CSV files. So uh, now we've seen just a couple examples of data visualization with PyGMT, and we can go on to a couple examples of the processing API. In our first example, we'll use a, a portion taken from the tutorial that Weiji put together for the EGU short course titled LiDAR Point Clouds to 3D Surfaces. In addition to PyGMT, we'll use LASPy to read in the LiDAR data and pandas. So we'll grid LiDAR data that was recently collected from Wellington, New Zealand that's available through open topography. First, we want to get a local copy of those data, and we can do that using pygmt.witch, which will download the uh, files specified to your current working directory if it does not already exist. Now we can uh, read in those data uh, using LASPy, and then for convenience, we'll format it into a pandas data frame. And lastly, we'll filter out high noise data, which are specified with uh, ID of 18. We need to know what the bounding box for the gridded data set should be, and we can acquire that information using pygmt.info, which will return a list containing the x min, x max, y min, and y max of those data. In general, PyGMT and GMT can grid data uh, through two steps. First, a pre-processing step to reduce the data, and then a uh, gridding uh, function. And so in our pre-processing step, we'll reduce the data by using block median to find the highest points, this is LiDAR data, um, within each one meter box within the uh, region of interest. And um, for all of the... Uh, functions that ex return tabular data, it'll be output or returned as a pandas data frame. So here we have a data frame with the 99th quantile of uh, data within each block. And we can then grid these data using continuous curvature splines using the surface method. So we'll pass in our X, Y, and Z data, specify that we want it to be a one meter grid and use a tension factor that's appropriate for uh, sharp edges, such as those in buildings, which is uh, in, in this uh, LiDAR data set. And again, for, for all um, functions that return raster data, you can expect a X-ray data array, although for all of these, you can also uh, output directly to a file on disk instead. So now we have produced a gridded data set from our LiDAR point cloud, and we can, again, visualize this using the methods of the figure class. Here, in particular, we will use GRD view to create a perspective image plot. We'll pass in our data array, use a different scientific color map, uh, color palette. We'll specify that we want this to be a surface plot specify the perspective as well as the vertical exaggeration. Once again, use some automatic hill shading and annotate different axes. So in this, since uh, PyGMT is computing the hill shading uh, while creating the figure, it takes a little bit longer, but we um, have our one meter resolution gridded data product of Wellington, New Zealand. And uh, in our second data processing example, we'll explore a subset of the tutorial that we have on transforming grids based on a cumulative distribution function. So this is an example of uh, grid histogram equalization if you want to adjust the contrast of an image or a raster data product. To start with, we'll again define the region that we're interested in working with. And we'll use the SRTM 15 plus data set again but uh, this time we'll use a higher resolution, so we'll use a three arc second resolution. 
And we'll use the GRD to XYZ function to store the elevation values as a pandas data frame. Uh, we'll display this uh, original digital elevation model. Once again, all plotting is done through the figure class. This time we can configure the appearance of our map in a little bit more detail using pygmt.config. So this sets the output format for our geographic uh, axes labels, as well as using a plain uh, map border rather than a fancy map border. And we'll define the color map that we want applied to these data. PyGMT supports uh, subplots, insets, et cetera, through uh, context managers. So here we'll use uh, the subplot method as a context manager to create a figure with two different panels. And we'll use the set, me set panel method uh, in order to um, specify which panel each map element should be plotted on. So for our first panel, we'll plot our digital uh, elevation model, again, using GRD image. And in the second panel, we'll plot the distribution of elevation values using histogram. And once again, add a color bar. So here we have our digital elevation model. We can use um, the equalize grid uh, method in GRD histiq to um, transform these data values to have a linear distribution. So we'll set the number of divisions to be 10, and we'll use uh, the, this grid equalization function and, again, store the uh, elevation values as a data frame. So uh, this uh, will plot the same um, structure for our map and our configuration, but with our transform data. So now you see that the um, resultant grid has a linear distribution where the values of zero represent the lowest 10% of data. And this is done on an equal area basis. So here we have just a couple examples of the data processing and data visualization tools provided by PyGMT. Again, I would encourage you to visit our documentation if you want to find out uh, more about other capabilities provided by the library. Uh, in addition to our documentation, I encourage you to join our discourse forum. In our, uh, the community forum, you can ask and answer questions about PyGMT. You can also post uh, in our example showcase as well as get uh, notifications of release announcements, as well as notifications of our quarterly community meetings that everyone is welcome to join. All of the development for PyGMT happens on GitHub. Since Leo and Paul started the project in 2017, we've had five new maintainers come on board, uh, including me. We've had uh, over 40 contributors get involved for various amounts of time. And we currently have uh, many good first issues in our repository. So if you think you might benefit from uh, working on a geospatial data package like PyGMT, I would encourage you to get involved through GitHub or even better, reach out to me during this conference. I'll be here through the sprints. Uh, in particular, I'd like to uh, highlight one of the um, primary uh, large objectives we have moving forward, and that is to simplify the user experience um, through more intuitive argument structure. This is something that we've been aware of for quite a while, but was highlighted in recent PyOpenSci reviews, and we're excited to make progress on this issue. So as one example, on the left here, we have, um, if you note the argument structure for the po position parameter, um, this is kind of GMT style syntax. So the first letter is a directive that sets the justification. And then you have uh, two characters that justify that on the top right. Then you have a modifier plus O that sets the offset, which uh, will be offset 0.3 centimeters in the X direction, 0.6 centimeters in the Y direction, and then another modifier plus W to set the width. 
So if you've been using GMT for many years, this might be intuitive. For anyone who has not used GMT, this is likely very much not intuitive. And we'd like to change that. We want PyGMT to be accessible to both longtime GMT users as well as new people coming directly from other um, experiences. So in one of our pinned issues, number 1082, we discussed different options for simplifying the syntax. I won't go into much detail here, but proposals include separating out each of these directive and modifiers into individual parameters or using convenience classes under the um, motivation that for many different methods and functions, you have to uh, specify where you want it positioned. So if this is something that interests you, if you think you might be interested in using this package or help developing it, I really encourage you uh, to get in touch. Uh, thanks again, everyone, and I hope you enjoy the conference. So at this point, uh, we'll open up for questions. Um, I'll go ahead and moderate the questions directly from the Slack. Uh, so again, if you're interested in asking a question uh, for our presenter, go ahead and join the track questions-room-204 to ask your question. So the first question here is from Martin. Uh, PyGMT, great idea wrapping such a popular uh, library. Do you have any thoughts on how this compares to pure Python solutions such as X-Ray, Iris slash CartaPy or Climate Lab? Yeah, thanks for your great question. Um, I will um, address them slightly different uh, in uh, uh, two parts. First of all, one main difference from X-Ray is that, is that PyGMT and GMT is for a large part designed around either 2D grids or raster images. So um, there's not a whole lot of support right now for um, applying a, a gridding function to uh, an n-dimensional array. That's one main difference with X-Ray. Regarding um, matplotlib-based visualization libraries, um, such as CartoPy, I think a main difference is on interactivity. So PyGMT is and GMT uh, historically have focused, or they're designed around PostScript files, where you add different layers to a static file. That said, there are ways um, using, uh, for example, all of his tools to create interactivity with PyGMT, but it's not um, ingrained in the API design in the same way. All right. Next question: uh, Are the hosted uh, are the hosted data sets like our SRTM and COS available offline? Once you download them, yes, you can continue to use them offline. Um, in in general, uh, GMT uh, operates using a kind of dot gmt folder and in that is a cache where if you download um, the the first time that you use the data sets the they'll be downloaded into that cache directory and moving forward it will not re-download it each time it does check if there has been an update so for example a few months ago we updated from uh, srtm 3.4 to uh, 2.3 to 2.4 and it will download updates unless you configure that to off Awesome. Uh, next question. How does the rendering speed compare to Matplotlib or Cartapy? That's a great question. It is on my to-do list to benchmark that. <laughs> and then uh, another question. Uh, does PyGMT allow the plotting of the chloropleth math maps? Chloropleth maps? It's a mouthful. <laughs> Uh, another great question, thank you. Uh, yeah, actually that was um, one of the examples that we put together for that EGU short course. So in there you can um, see how to create um, choropleth maps from uh, polygon geometries stored as a geodata frame. In addition, you could, you could work with um, any sort of OGR supported data format to create those maps. <laughs> 